scientists say that our brains have enough memory space to store the entire internet. They also say that our brain actually produces electricity and that it contains nearly 90 billion neurons and that information travels between these neurons at a speed of up to 260 kilometers per hour. All of this goes to show us that our God is so magnificent and powerful. Who can understand or think the way he thinks? He is so wise and intentional about us. Many times we focus on everything else and plainly ignore the glorious brain and mind that God has given us. Have you ever made up your mind to do something and then found yourself doing the complete opposite? You say, for example, I'd like to start waking up at 5 a.m. every day so I can spend time with God before I get too busy with everything else. But you keep waking up long past the time. Or perhaps you've faced a mountain that you just couldn't seem to get around or a problem that didn't seem to have any solution. Some of us have struggled with addictions or issues that we just can't seem to find a way out of. Some have received promises with God that they keep believing for but just can't seem to experience. And you're at a place where you're beginning to wonder if it really will happen. I'd like to share one of my favorite quotes with you today. It says, there is no mountain anywhere. Every man's mountain is in his own mind. How true is this? Is your mind really that powerful? I know we looked at the scientific facts of what our brain is capable of, but this is a whole other level. The Bible answers this question for us very simply and straightforwardly. When it says in Proverbs, the 23rd chapter from verse 7, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Very plainly, God is telling us here that whatever you are experiencing in your life right now is as a result of whatever you are thinking of. Your thoughts determine your feelings which then determine your actions and your actions determine your results why is this so important for you to understand because many of us desire to see a certain result in our lives you may be praying to see the hand of god move in your life in a certain way you may be desiring a change in some aspect of your life and you may have heard that all you need to do is to pray believe and then begin to take actions in faith and you begin to see the result and you've done all this you have prayed you have had faith that god is capable of doing this thing in your life and that he wants to do it you may even have taken actions but you're still not seeing the results i've come to share with you the reason why you may not be seeing the results in your life that you desire to see yet did you know that your thoughts can actually fight god you may be praying for a breakthrough in your life and your thoughts will reject what God wants to do in your life. Your mind can limit the creator of the universe. Many of us have been taught to pray, but few of us have learned how to align our thoughts with what God wants to do in our lives or what we desire. If I asked you what you were thinking of 30 seconds ago, could you tell definitely? How about a five minute or one hour ago? So many thoughts run through our mind on an average day than we'll ever be able to keep track of. And these thoughts are shaping our lives. These thoughts are determining how you feel and what you do and the results you're getting. You may have said before today, I want to improve my life in this way and you just don't see any results. You even find it difficult to take any action. The reason for that, according to the Bible, is because of your thoughts. You know, see at the fourth chapter, the sixth verse, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But I've come to tell you today that it is not just important to get knowledge, it is important to understand it. And even more important, to think it, to meditate on it, to be sure that your thoughts agree with the knowledge and understanding that you get. Joshua. The first chapter, the eighth verse tells us, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. In Psalms, the first chapter, the third verse, it says, But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, 
and who meditates on his law day and night. Notice how God emphasizes that it is not enough to read or know or hear what God is saying to you, but you must think about it intentionally until it becomes so natural that it shapes your thoughts naturally. Then you, the Bible says, will experience and will see good success. Many times, we have no idea what's going on in our minds. God is telling us today that if you will see the results you desire, you have to be intentional about what you're thinking. You can't afford to let your mind think whatever it wants. Philippians 4 verse 8 tells us, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever be admirable, if there be any excellency or praiseworthy, think on these things can choose your thoughts and you just have to you must choose your thoughts are you intentionally choosing what you think of are your thoughts empowering you or are they disempowering you are your thoughts agreeing with what god says he wants to do in your life or what you are believing god for are you being intentional about your thoughts we win or lose at the level of our minds and our thoughts paul says that when we fight spiritual warfare it is mostly in our minds at the level of our thoughts. He says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 5th verse. The devil will first attack your mind before he attacks anything else because if he can defeat the mind, then he can defeat you in other places. How prepared is your mind? Have you been feeding your mind with the word of God? Are you constantly filling your mind with good things? Are you protecting your thoughts and standing guard over them? Are you letting any thoughts, no matter what kind of junk they may be, take up space in your mind? Just before I leave you today, I'd like to remind you of one last thing. In the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, the second verse, he says, Do not, brother, do not, sister, be conformed to this world would be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. I pray for you today that as you intentionally begin to watch your thought life and bring it into alignment with God, may you begin to experience the perfect will of God in your life. In Jesus' holy name, God bless you.